So if you're thinking about moving to Mexico, you may be looking for the answers and that might be why you're watching this video because a lot of people start out on YouTube looking for answers but then you can go a step further in finding someone to work with who has all the answers that are not out of date, that are well thought out, because there's a bunch of us people creating YouTube videos that may be a little bit off once in a while. So someone who is not off, though, is Mariana Lang, and she is with me today, and she's going to be talking about the Mexico Relocation Guide, which is her business, and her business is providing this guide that gives you pretty much everything you need to move to Mexico all in one place, all well thought out, all well, all well researched, and all updated. And I think that is probably the biggest thing. So Mariana, thank you so much for being with me here today. Are you kidding me? The pleasure's all mine. Thank you so much for having me. Great. So let's answer the question, how does the guide work? So just a, a pretty simple walk us through what people should expect, what's uh, What's a, what's a typical experience working with the guide? Yeah, yeah. I think that's a great question and I wanna thank you again for uh, inviting me to clarify that. So, you know, the reason, I, I'll start off with why we created the guide and how we saw kind of a hole in the process when researching moving to Mexico. So, you know, my husband and I were thinking a few years ago, Despite how much we earn and despite how much, uh, you know, our income had been increasing, you know, we had been putting in the hustle, we had been working hard, we had been getting promotions at our jobs. And, and despite considered, you know, pretty well high income earners in our fields, um, it just felt like it was never going to be enough for us to actually be able to retire comfortably. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, you know, the cost of living keeps going up, especially in particular big cities in the United States where um, where we live in Austin, for example, Texas, the cost of living is very high and it keeps going up. Right. The more people move and the more people and then the pandemic actually made it even significantly higher or worse mm -hmm. because an inflation happened. And I'm sure everybody can empathize with or relate at least with how inflation has affected their bottom line. So anyway, to make a really long story short, we started looking into the possibility of moving somewhere else. Right. And and looking at how we could lower our expenses. Uh, we looked at uh, places like the Rio Grande Valley where I grew up and the Rio Grande Valley is in Texas and that you know is considered to be a really low cost of living area in the United States. But you know, the culture isn't really there. I mean, not to diss the Rio Grande Valley or anything like that, but it's just not a place that I would ever see myself uh, moving back to. And, uh, and then we looked at uh, Spain, we looked at Portugal, we looked at Mexico and you know, I obviously Mexico stood out the most because I'm from Mexico. I grew up in Mexico. My whole family lives in Mexico. We are the only part of my family that lives in the United States. So I have a pretty good network of people in Mexico, uh, particularly Mexico City. So, you know, now we split our time between those two places. And in that time frame of doing my research, uh, I started realizing that a lot of the information I found online was, uh, some of it was really good, some of it was very helpful, uh, some of it was entirely out of date, and I'm talking like government websites, consulate websites, mm -hmm. the people that you think would have the most verified and actual information are sometimes the worst at keeping their information up to date. Or even like poorly translated. Totally. I mean, sometimes like they will do the translation and it's like, wow, this doesn't make any sense, uh, even though it's a government website. And they're trying to do their best to like help out people overseas, but sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah, totally, totally. And then, you know, yeah, there's also, you know, I'm lucky in that Spanish is my first language, but for somebody who's not so lucky to be able to translate these things, they don't translate one to one, even if you Google translate them. So you have to interpret yeah. them, right, and, and understand what it is they're requiring. Um, so I, I started researching more, and then there's also very misleading information out there from, you know, big publications who just claim that you can live like royalty on pennies, right? And that's just, you can live very low cost of living. Yes, you can lower your cost of living, but you won't be able to have this like royalty life on pennies. And I saw a need. So that's how Mexico Relocation Guide was born. Uh, so I started researching these topics like 
how to get residency, what are the actual requirements, what is the actual process, not what the consulate website says, but what is the actual process, right? Because a lot of people show up thinking that information is complete, and then they actually find out at their appointment that they needed, you know, X, Y, Z documents that they didn't bring, uh, which was never posted on their website. The same thing happens when you move to Mexico. Uh, you might find on the government's website for whatever city you're living in that you want to get a driver's license in, and it tells you, you know, you need this document, this document, and this document. And then you show up and they tell you you need blood work and you need a proof of address and all these other things that weren't posted on there. So mm -hmm. I started really putting a guide together that was easy to follow, that has very simple uh, details, right, that, are, that anybody can follow. And, um, and it's just grown from there. We started this about three years ago. Uh, we started with just residency and real estate and those kinds of topics that are very top of mind. And since then, it's grown to a myriad of different categories from, you know, how to open up a bank account to uh, finding out, you know, where are the best places to live um, to what are some common scams that you should know about and how to avoid them right mm -hmm. uh, to even cultural differences and how to best integrate into the country and then the the probably like the number one reason why people seek out our guide the most is because we do have a very extensive directory of contacts throughout mexico that can help you do a variety of legal things uh, from helping you obtain your residency to helping you get a rental, to helping you get a driver's license, to helping you open a bank account, to helping you set up utilities, uh, to driving you across the border, right? They'll, some, some of our private drivers will meet you in Canada or the United States and then drive you and your dogs or your belongings to Mexico, uh, especially if somebody has never driven in Mexico and they're just kind of scared for the first time. Uh, so there's just so many resources in the guide and the biggest the biggest, biggest thing about the guide is it really does save people time. Uh, there's a lot of questions that people didn't even know they had to be asking themselves. Uh, so we include all those steps in the online guide. And, you know, it, it wasn't only written by me because I don't claim to be a, a realtor in Mexico. I don't claim to be like a, a doctor or a healthcare professional or an immigration facilitator. So I work with a lot of really good, reputable people that help me write the online guide. So you know that it's actually accurate. And then we're consistently keeping it up to date. All these people get in touch with me. All these facilitators and contacts that we recommend are constantly giving me updates. So we're constantly updating the online guide with actual information as it's happening. Yeah. So you said it's an online guide. It's not. No one ever gets a piece of paper, right? This is not like a you know a, a guide that you can hold in your hands, right? Correct. Yeah. You get a you you get an online login. You log into a portal, uh, and then it's actually online. Cool. Can, can we see it real quick? Can you pull up that yeah. online portal? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to share my screen. So this is a back end of what somebody can see whenever they have their login. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the very first thing that people are probably looking for is a directory of contacts. And we have a variety of them from, you know, immigration facilitators to insurance agents, um, realtors, driver's license, car registration facilitators, emergency services for people who don't speak Spanish. I mean, if you're stuck on the middle of the road and maybe you have a flat or maybe um, maybe something more serious, right? And you need to call 911. Well, 911 in Mexico is going to be 99% of the time in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just don't feel comfortable, you're maybe you you don't know Spanish or maybe your basic Spanish isn't enough to get you through an operator. Um, there are people that you can sign up with as a membership and uh, call them and they will call the ambulance for you or they will call 911 for you. Uh, so, you know, that's invaluable. Yeah. And actually, I want to I want to expand on that a little bit just because I, I know that uh, this person's not in the guide. This is just, you know, kind of my my guy down the street. But um, his name's Ben. He's really helpful here. And he has a number of clients, so he kind of, you know, maybe he should be in the guide for La Paz, but one of his clients had a car accident and it wasn't the woman's fault, but she was a gringa and she didn't speak Spanish and the police were essentially blaming it on her. And she called Ben and Ben cruised over and, you know, saw that there were there were cameras in the OXO or something next door. And he said, will you go get those, those you know, cameras? And they showed that the other guy was clearly at fault. So 
And then he helped her through the process of going through, like with the police. There's, there's, there's a lot of process if you get in an accident in Mexico. And without him, without having that contact who knows the system, uh, you know, even if they did speak Spanish, if they didn't know the system, they weren't going to get very far. So having someone like that is is a really smart um a smart thing someone else was saying how you know like like her clients like they just call her and like if they get pulled over by the police for instance and they'll they'll call and you know put her on speakerphone and she'll be like you know arguing with the police and yeah. then the police you, typically they just say okay go ahead you know we don't want to deal with the fact that there's now someone who knows what the law the is law. Yeah, and, you know, because they they just they see they ski, see your skin color and they're like, okay, well, this probably this person's probably wealthier and probably doesn't understand what they did or did not do, and is probably going to be willing to give me some money, and it it happens. And having someone like this, so you essentially you've got this for people all over the place, right? So you've got local yeah. guides. So some of these are membership services, but. Like, like here in La Paz, do you have, you've got someone here or a couple people that will help? I, I, this emergency service specifically is for <laughs> nationwide in Mexico. So, you know, it's one phone number. They have operators, uh, 24 mm. seven, and then they can call 911 for you. 911 will dispatch an ambulance or whatever the case might be. Or if you have the cops, you call the number that they give you on your membership and then somebody will get on the phone and translate whatever they're trying to tell oh, you. That's awesome. Um, so they won't show up in person particularly right that's like right. maybe next level <laughs> <laughs> yeah but still it's a it's a great service i'd never heard of this yeah but for la paz you know we do have like immigration facilitators people who can give you a relocation tour uh people can show you rentals um a variety of other facilitators that can help you do various things uh while you get situated because it can be stressful to move it's stressful to move to a different city in your own country. Mm -hmm. um, imagine that with a foreign language, with a foreign culture, with the foreign everything, right? Even the law system is different. Uh, so just having liaisons on your side that are looking for your best interest, right? You are their client. So they're going to basically be your intermediary, your, your, your middleman, right? Helping you right. Um, get the better part of that situation. And, and I think that too, like the amount of time you can save there is, you know, you don't have to be searching the internet for this stuff and you aren't sure if that's going to be good information once you get there. And, uh, you know, once you're, you're doing something and you're, if you have some like immigration, for instance, you know, it took us a lot of, a lot of those copies. Oh, you don't have enough copies. Oh, you copied the wrong thing. Oh no, you need to go to this bank over here. Having someone, I think a lot of people are moving to Mexico to make life more simple. And so having someone in your corner who can help you make that simple, I think is, is pretty key. So, um, but these are people essentially when they're buying into the guide, they're not buying into those additional services. They're buying a list of services that you've vetted, people that you've vetted that they can then contract with them directly. Is that kind of how that works? Yeah, correct. So the services or the fees of these individuals are not included. What you're essentially buying when you get the guide is our step to step, right? Step by step plan on moving to Mexico. I mean, we have, I'm just going to show you guys a quick yep. idea of what's included. I mean, residency visas, there's so much information in there, healthcare and insurance, how the healthcare system works in Mexico and how to get health insurance, um, driving in Mexico, right? Like what are the little bits of information that a lot of people don't know. We've had so many clients that didn't know they had to get a special permit to drive through Mexico City or Puebla, and mm -hmm. then they get stopped and they get fined a big amount. So, you know, we cover those things here. Uh, cost of living, just some examples. Uh, so people get a really good idea of, you know, what their cost of living will actually be. Real estate and rentals, moving, you know, how, how to move your things. Should you move your things? Should you sell everything? Like some cost analysis there. Mm -hmm. uh, estate planning, right? Like preparing a will, why you need to do one in Mexico and why the one from your home country won't work in Mexico. Uh, you know, some important phone numbers that you need to keep in mind, pets, telecommunications, just some internet providers that we recommend and some other apps for your phones that we recommend having, things like that. Um, why you should open a bank account in Mexico and then some additional reasons or documents that you will need to open a bank mm -hmm. account. 
Uh, crime and safety, this is probably a big one that a lot of people are interested in. It's just like, you know, some common things that you need to watch out for in Mexico. And these aren't only for, I want to make sure that people don't think just because they're foreigners, these are the only, only foreigners are victims of scams and corruption. No, mm -hmm. it even happens to Mexican nationals. Like it happens to a lot of people in Mexico, unfortunately, right? It's, it's one of my least favorite things, of course, but it does mm -hmm. happen. And I want you to make, be aware of them. Tax for a lot of people like you and I, Brighton, right, that we're not fully retired yet, but we're still making an income and what to know about certain maybe benefits that you can take advantage of when you move to Mexico. Um, and also for people who are collecting Social Security or maybe their Canadian pension, uh, you know, what tax obligations you may have in Mexico and which ones you don't. Uh, so there's a lot of information in here. And then I'm constantly doing exclusive video Q and A's with our service providers. Mm -hmm. So they answer a variety of questions for our customers. But, but yeah, no, the fees of the recommendations or our contacts are not included in the online guide. When you buy the online guide, it's a one-time fee. You get lifetime access, so you will never have to pay again. And you get access to all of this information. But if you do decide to hire somebody from the online guide, that is their additional fee. And it varies based on what you're hiring them for. What's great about this is there's so much information packed in one place because with all businesses these days, it seems like, yeah, you can find all this information on YouTube and Google if you were to spend all day for the next six years trying to find it. And then you would have conflicting between Brighton and Q Paul and different people will say different things and you're not sure which one's right. So that's what I like about this guide is that you have the people, I mean, it is, it is something people have to pay for. And that by paying for it, that supports you and the people that are contributing to the guide so that you can keep it up to date. I mean, that's the difference between going out there and getting something for free, which, you know, I'm, I hope that I'm entertaining and I do provide good information for people, but to get the level of stuff that you provide in the guide, that is something that is, is not free because you just can't. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Your channel, Q RuPaul's channel, all these other channels have fantastic information. I, uh, I recommend people do their due diligence. This is one source of information, right? So it's like, if you're serious about moving to Mexico, I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, convenience is big. So can you do it on your own without buying the Mexico relocation guide? Absolutely. Is it gonna take you possibly longer because you're trying to filter through various different articles, different videos. You have no idea if something was published in 2022, if it's still accurate in 2023, mm -hmm. um, especially if there hasn't been an update done to that particular content, right? Or article or blog post mm -hmm. or video. Um, so the benefit of this is one, we're consistently updating it Two, We know the information in here is accurate, right? Um, and three, we have the contacts that you don't have to necessarily try to do the research for on who to hire because we vet them for you. And then we, we know that these people are trustworthy and reputable. All so important. As I mentioned earlier, people are moving to Mexico to have a more simple life uh, and more, more chill and, and enjoy life. And I think that's, that's, uh, this is, this is a great resource for people who are living in Mexico and also people who are even thinking about it, uh, you know, making an investment in your future so that you can start reading through all this stuff. And you're like, Oh, okay. We got to think about this. I mean, it's just great information to have so that when something happens, you're, you're ready for it instead of being like, Oh, now's the time to, uh, to Google Q RuPaul and <laughs> start figuring out how to deal with, uh, such and such issue. Yeah. This is really what I wanted. I wanted to kind of understand a little better, and I hope that this has helped. You've given people a nice preview of what they're going to find in the guide. And there is a link down below. We have an affiliate relationship, um, Mariana and I, so that, you know, it is, uh, it is supporting my channel along with, uh, with supporting all the great stuff that Mariana provides and all the great stuff that her, her network provides. One of the things that you have is, is Mexico relocation tours where those folks that are in the guide will help people kind of with your, uh, your methodology of, of giving a tour. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? And, and that is something that, that once again, they, they get the name of the person and pay them. Yeah. 
For a lot of people, living in Mexico is very different than vacationing in Mexico, right? I mean, oh, at, yeah. at least it should be, unless you live in an all-inclusive resort and then you just never leave the resort. But for, for living in Mexico, you want to be able to, when you're doing a scouting trip or when you're considering a place to live in Mexico, you have to consider other things that maybe a tour isn't going to give you a touristic tour, right, isn't really going to give you the insight on. Like, for example, what are the pros and cons of living in one neighborhood versus the other? Um, what is shopping like, right? Like, where do the locals actually shop for their fruits, for their vegetables, for their uh, meat, dairy? Uh, what are the places that maybe you should avoid that don't really have a good reputation? And, you know, in Mexico, it's not as common to have Yelp reviews and, like, Google mm -hmm. reviews for some of these very local places. So that's why we have of, uh, private relocation tours and we have them all across Mexico um, I'm going to share my screen again and share you, with you some of the cities that we offer them in and it's ideal really because you don't have to worry about renting a car knowing where to go parking it having to figure out how to drive in this particular city adding the stress of being new in this particular place so we have them in various cities throughout Mexico. I'm just going to scroll down the page so people can get an idea of mm -hmm. how many cities we offer them in. And each individual city has probably one or two private relocation tour guides that we recommend. Those people are local to the area. So either they have lived there their whole lives or they have lived there long enough for them to be able to truly give you an idea of what living there is like. And some of the things that you might never learn online, like you know, for example, what neighborhoods have sh water shortages constantly, or maybe, uh, you know, which neighborhoods flood really often, things like that. So I really recommend private relocation tours for somebody who is narrowing down their list of places to live in Mexico. If you have more than one, right? And you really want to get an idea between you actually before you actually make the decision of moving to one versus the other of what it's like to truly live there. Uh, to get access to our list of recommendations for private relocation tour guides, you do have to buy the guide first. Again, it's a one-time fee, lifetime access, and then this is also included in our extensive directory of recommendations or contacts throughout Mexico. Yeah, that's awesome because there is. There's so many things that are, are little, like having someone drive you around and stop where there's no stop sign because they know and they can explain. Like if you're in um, in Cabo, uh, I think Cabo San Lucas, like they don't have stop signs. There's just like everybody knows where to stop. I think they just get blown down in hurricanes and then they never put them back. And I know there's some spots in La Paz that are like that where it's like, well, everybody knows there used to be a stop sign there. So you better stop because, you know, that's just there's just this local knowledge that in the United States, you just... You expect the government's going to like fix all that stuff and down here yeah. like uh, having a local take you around and say like oh yeah that's you don't want to go over there you do want to go here this is these this place has great prices this place is too expensive also very important so our recommendations for our, our private relocation tour guides have no agenda to sell you anything so they're mm -hmm. not realtors they're not going to take you on a home buying tour right so you mm -hmm. don't have to feel pressured of like oh, where's the sales pitch coming, right? You pay yeah. them for their time. It's usually 150 to $200 a day for two people. Mm -hmm. so it includes basically their time, their transportation, their gas, uh, taking you around without an agenda of trying to sell you anything. So there's no timeshare presentation at exactly. the end. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Mariana, for being here with all of us. So if people have questions, you have, oh, we got little dogs popping up on the... They're getting antsy here. Uh, it's almost <laughs> lunchtime for them. But if people have questions, um, you know, kind of before they buy the guide, I know you have some live streams and whatnot. Uh, you know, how can people get in touch and ask those questions? I try to have weekly live streams on Thursdays at 6 p.m. If you're not a part of my newsletter, that's how you find out when the next live stream is. Uh, so mm -hmm. go to MexicoRelocationGuide.com forward slash newsletter, sign up. Um, but if you have a question, you're ready to buy the guide and you just want to know if a specific contact is included in there, if we have a specific information on particular cities, um, please send me an email, info at MexicoRelocationGuide.com. Dot com. Um, before you buy the guide, there's also a very handy FAQ on what's included, what you can expect after you buy the guide. So I highly encourage you to also go through that FAQ. And um, for anybody who's wondering out there, like, is this for me? You know, we have 
thousands of customers in various countries. As long as you can read English, this guide is for you. Doesn't matter if you're not moving to Mexico for a few years. Many of our customers buy it years in advance. Um, and you know, I think I think it's very valuable. Don't take it from me. We have a lot of reviews. Go check out our Facebook page. Uh, we have tons of reviews in there. So. Yes, and I just did a review recently, did a, a testimonial video with one of the people who bought the guide, and that's why we're having this video today, because the people who buy the guide always rave about it. So I wanted to have a little bit more information for people who are, have not yet purchased it. So you also have that YouTube channel, and I'm going to put that a video from the YouTube channel up here, and another one down here, maybe about these dogs that are being crazy, but a good one just for you. So hasta luego. Gracias.